Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out a pretty cool monster cross bike from South Africa. There's differing wheel sizes on some downhill bikes. We check out some awesome bike case from you. In fact, some of the best ones we've had so far. And also, I do a couple of top mods on Christmas brand new nuke proof bike. So straight into news, and first up in news, I want to throw you over to the GMBN store actually because our Black Friday specials end on Wednesday at midnight, so you can snap yourself up a bargain still. In particular, there's some pretty cool stuff like our limited edition silver and gold tops we've been wearing over the last week on the channel. They're available in short and long sleeves. Um, I'm really a fan of the silver in short sleeves, so snap your bargains up. All right, next up is something I spotted on Instagram, actually. So a few weeks back, we reported on the Viper bike from Monson Bikes, so the South African brand. And that bike was like the Epic XC sort of World Cup style bike there and aimed at things like the Cape Epic. And it definitely threw out some mixed opinions, but I really quite liked it. And I started following them on Instagram. And have a look at this bad boy that they've just put up there. So it's a Monster Cross version of the same bike and they're calling it the Munga Machine. Uh, not quite sure what Munga Machine means, but it sounds pretty good. So really it's a Viper Ultra. Now it's got SRAM Force One on it, DT Swiss OPM ODLs up front there, Edge Fusion Maniacs. Man, this thing's like dripping and really cool stuff. And it's quite interesting. Um, I'm in two minds though, what I feel about the Monster Cross thing, the gravel thing, the... Uh, I don't know, it's kind of a bit confused, I think, but uh, somehow I think it works though. It does look really cool. What do you guys think of it? Should you ever put drop bars on a bike like this? Or is it actually kind of a weird, cool, quirky alternative thing to do? Would you ride a gravel bike or would you rather just ride a light mountain bike? Genuinely love to know, so let us know in those comments. So the next thing I spotted on Instagram actually whilst having a little surf round is Nico Mullally is running twin wheel sizes on his downhill bike, that's a, a YT2S. So you've got a 27 half out back and a 29 up front. Now I know he did experiment with this a while back and there were mixed views on it, but now I'm wondering what the response is gonna be. Now the UCI have said that you can actually run different wheel sizes on bikes and races next year. Now this kind of, came into our attention really with Canyon doing this on their e-bike and of course Fantix doing this as well. Very much a thing that's come from the moto world. Makes a lot of sense by all accounts, having that bigger wheel up front for the accuracy and then the harding, hard hitting sort of 27 and a half with a big tire out back to take the sting out of stuff. But also it's a slightly smaller wheel so you've got that increased clearance out back that you don't get with the 29 inch wheel, which of course is something that has been a problem on those long travel downhill bikes. You think with the wheel moving 200 millimeters, it's gonna get closer to the saddle, you have to run your saddle higher. If you're a shorter rider, it becomes a problem with clearance buzzing on bottom outs and G outs and stuff. So by all accounts, I think it's a really smart thing having that bigger wheel up front for the control and accuracy, and then having that smaller wheel out back. Just wondering where this is gonna go. Who's gonna be the first person to uh, win a race like this? I saw Danny Hart on Instagram riding a 29er the other day. I wouldn't be surprised to see him experimenting with the mixed wheel sizes, especially seeing he's, he's so good on the motocross bikes. So I wonder if any of that sort of transfers across. Spotted any other ones out there? Let us know. I'd love to know if anyone's seen any other people experimenting with twin wheel sizes. Um, but don't, don't inundate us with pictures of the specialized big hit from way back in the day because to be honest, it's a bike that should be forgotten about. So propane back in the news again with another new bike. Dubbing this one the Park Rat. Of course, this is the Rage, their downhill bike. And you're often a sort of a bit more of a bike parky feel sort of spec and look. It's an aluminium version, of course. Recently we reported on the carbon version, which is, well, I think, one of the better looking downhill bikes out there for sure. But uh, this one actually shares those really nice looks and I've got to say I love that green colour. I know Blake will be all over that because Blake has to have everything in green these days. But uh, it's a really nice bike. Have a look at this on screen and super nice images as well, whoever shot these. So there's three models and they vary from 2,550 euros complete bike, which I think is a really good price considering the spec on it, all the way up to 5,600, which again, although that is a lot of money, you're getting a lot of bike for that money. So there's three sizes. There's a small, medium and large. So it's 420, 445 and 470 reach on those. Of course, 470 reach on the size large is pretty good if you consider that a lot of trail bikes have a similar geometry to that. So I think that's great. Um, in fact, the 470 reach, just emphasizing that, so some extra large bikes are only hovering around 480 reach. So I think that's great. Uh, 63 and a half degree head angle up front, a nice roomy 445 mil chain stays out back for really good control when sliding and 
putting your weight a bit more in the middle of the bike. So quite important with a long downhill bike. They've also got that Rock Strike down tube and their Dirt Shield bearing covers, which is something I absolutely I love. I think that's a great touch. Um, and it just looks like a bike that you could just send it down the mountain all day long and not really have to worry about. Of course, like the carbon bike is going to be lighter, might have a slightly different ride quality to it. But if you're doing a season and you like hanging out in bike parks and you know, we're thinking like Whistler and all the European bike parks, then this sort of bike is going to be perfect for you. I think it's banging. Another brand I keep hearing being talked about that I don't really know too much about, I've never ridden one, is Last Bikes. So Last are a German brand and they've always made some pretty good looking bikes but they've kind of gone under the radar a bit. So I'm just going to throw a few of them up on screen that are really quite cool. So first is the Cole. So this is their 160mm travel enduro race bike. 27 and a half inch wheels, just a really nice well shaped bike, it looks quite dynamic. And then there's the clay, so this is the 140mm version, uh, essentially an all mountain bike. Um, really I think that's sort of the magic number as far as trail bikes go, I think people are too obsessed to go straight for an enduro bike when really the all mountain bike is going to give them a little bit more performance uphill and they're going to have more fun on the downhills because the 160 bikes do isolate you unless you're pushing them really hard. But then there's the Glen, and this is the one that I like. So this is a 29 inch wheel bike, and this thing just looks stunning. So there's four sizes in this. There's a frame set option, a custom option, and they're doing a double XL size, and that's got 522 millimeters reach. That is colossal. I have to have a go on that bike at some point. That's even longer than my new proof, and that thing's 515. And that's one of the longer bikes I've ridden. So I would love to have a go on this and see how this thing sits on the trail, but it's super cool and with a lot of their bikes they do size specific geometry so the bigger bikes have steeper seat tube angles on them and also longer chain stays. Hurrah! Like more manufacturers should be doing this for the taller riders. Everyone's obsessed with the short chain stay thing. That works great on some bike sizes. As soon as you do that on those extra larges you're just looping out all the time. Your balance is all off, you can't get enough weight on the front. You need that longer chain stay out back to sort of balance things out. It gives it better handling all round. I think this is the way to go, and I'd love to see more manufacturers doing it. And finally in news, although it's an e-bike tire, it's actually really cool. So this is the Schwalbe Eddy Current. Now this is based on that twin wheel size thing. So I say e-bikes and they are intending them for e-bike users, but I can see lots of other people wanting to use these tires. So they're available in a super gravity casing, essentially downhill casing, with their super soft Addix rubber compound. It's just gonna grip to everything. But the thing that's really interesting about these tires is the size of the nobbles on them. So nobbles are 20% bigger than any other nobbles they've done before. And well, you think about it, it looks like a motocross tire and they're aiming them at e-bikes, but I reckon they'll also be really good on other bikes too. So definitely keen to have a look at some of those too. All right, now we're rolling straight into Bike Cave, which is of course the place where you keep your bikes. You tuck them up at night, you work on them, you curse at them occasionally, and all the rest of that stuff. So please get your entries in. We love seeing where you keep your bikes, even if it is just in a little garden shed. Wherever it is, we love to see them. So take some photos, let us know where it is, tell us what you're riding, what you plan on doing to your bikes, and send them into the link on the bottom of the screen there. That's our uploader. Super simple to use, and we'll get to put you on the show. So first up is from Paul, and this is confusing because it's called Don's Bike Boutique. Paul Boutique, Paul's Boutique. That was a Beastie Boys album, good album, Matt. Are you confused or is this just random? Anyway, so you've got Trek Fuel EX9, a 2018 Remedy 8, <whistles> very nice. Um, oh, so you're in the Rhonda Valley, okay, nice. So South Wales, I'm loving the sign on the door, Don's Bike Boutique. In fact, I think you might have to make another one of those for Neil because he would absolutely love that. Maybe he wouldn't, you couldn't tell if he loves something or not because he's quite serious sometimes, isn't he? <laughs> But uh, I love your place, I tell you. Loads of Gorilla Tape in there. Looks like you've got some Shimano mineral fluid at the back. Random MTB cleaner up the top there. Loads of stuff, I can't quite see the packaging to see what it is actually. Um, you've got some TFT, so that's well tight. Grease at the back there, I think. A first aid box, always important in the bike cave too. I've had some of my worst injuries when I've been tinkering with bikes. Um, nice pegboard there, a variety of X tools and park tools hanging up on the side. Nice little vice there, what's that, a little four incher, I think. Nice to see you've got some Explorer and Land Ranger maps up in the background. So that tells me that you're really into sort of exploring the countryside and heading out riding. That's a big plus, and I think you've got an awesome setup, Paul. Um, all your shoes on the shelves there, really clean actually. 
really clean. So you're obviously quite meticulous in looking after your kit as well. I see there's also a fire extinguisher too. Definitely an interesting sort of bike cave. If that's an old fire extinguisher, you can turn that into a tubeless pump, you know that, for a booster pump. Quite a good hack that is. I'll have to do a video on that because I haven't done that one yet, I just realised. But uh, yeah, thank you for sending that in. Loads of cool stuff in your bike cave. Very nice to see. Next up is from Philippe in Brie, which is in Belgium. And this looks very familiar to me. Nice big lumps of OSB. That's of course, that's a sterling board on the back there. Looking good, you've got some Florida number plates there, American plates, park work stands, some bike art number plates. Absolutely loaded with stuff, looking awesome. Um, hey Doddy, first of all, loving the show, keep them coming. Here are my pigs of my bike cave. I hope they make it in the show. I just love working on my bikes. This year I started following evening school bike mechanics, purely for fun. Um, as you can see, my future trail dog is the head mechanic. I haven't got that shot yet. Let's have a look. Oh, dude, trail dog. We don't have a super nice category in here, but if there was, you'd be getting a super nice just on principle. Super cute little dog. In fact, I'm gonna send that picture to Blake, he'll love it. And uh, I love the print you've got there as well. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy a bike. And that's pretty close. Man, loads of stuff. And I like in the, uh, the sticker bombing going on on the big tube all the way across the top there. Good look, that is. Sweet. Oh, and the OSB always makes me feel like I'm at home. Oh. Next up, this one is insane. This looks like a bike shop. So this one's from Ica in uh, Valley de Bravo in Mexico. Wow. Doddy, I just finished my bike straight man cave. I started from scratch in an area of our house we had no use for. The view is amazing and I even get to see the bike cave from my bedroom. I installed a small bathroom, two closets for my riding and hiking gear, and even a small couch if my wife kicks me from the house. <laughs> oh man, I'd love to come and stay, it looks awesome. Yeah, there's no need to say this is a space I used to watch um, GMBN and GMBN tech videos like Clockwork every day. Uh, love all your content. Oh mate, this is, this is insane. I'm loving the back end of the bike bolted on the outside. That is so cool. That's kind of like the opposite of my friend who has got a bar in town and he's got these frames mounted uh, from the uh, seat tube, basically poking out the front with mounted lights and head tubes. So similar sort of idea, but you've got literally half a bike bolted to the side of the building. I love it. Absolutely love it. And you've got the whole enchilada, so I'm guessing that might be one of your favorite trails. That is actually my favorite trail, so that's something we've definitely got in common on top of the bike thing. Loving that bike was hanging up in Orange Marin. Oh mate, this looks so good. It's huge. Your kitchen in your bike cave is bigger than my kitchen. This is insane. Oh dude, oh, you've just ruined my day. You've actually got the nicest bike cave I've ever seen. Thank you and thanks. <laughs> See you later guys. Uh, please continue to send them in. Honestly, we love them. Like I said, it doesn't matter. It could be a palace like the one I've just seen here from uh, Mexico, or it could be a tiny little garden shed. Whatever they are, they're all just as good as each other. So please continue to send them in. All right, now it's time for Rewind, which is the retro section of the show. Anything retro goes, you could be sending us a link to a really cool old video. You could be sending us a picture of a cool old bike or bit of kit you've got. Any old mountain biking stuff, we love it. So please use that link underneath there. Get some stuff into us. Ask us some questions too. If there's some interesting things that have led to new bikes today, do you want to know about them? Or perhaps you've seen images of a crazy old weird design online. Let us know, we'll dig them out, we'll tell you the story about where they came from. And chances are, one of us has probably ridden them, so we'll tell you about that side of them too. All right, now first up is from Charlie. Uh, location is Bike Park Wales. So that's a UK sort of downhill biased uh, trail center. Don't need a downhill bike, it's just all the trails flow downhill. So your choice, what you ride, cross country bike, trail bike, enduro bike, downhill bike. Uh, or in Charlie's case, um, a 1998 orange clockwork, which pleases me immensely to see. It's amazing it's still in one piece and you're still riding it, let alone riding it somewhere like that. It's got some pretty rough trails tucked away there, but I'd imagine you're probably on the, the less rough trails given how old and delicate those bikes will be compared to what we have today. But two old oranges there, both using the paste forks on with the reverse arches. In fact, the one on the right looks like it's got the MX-36 with the twin arch set up on there. In fact, the one on the left does as well by the looks of it, looking on closer inspection. Uh, both super nice looking bikes, I've got to say. Really cool. There's something about those old orange clockworks and what a timeless bike and such a great name as well. Um, I'm guessing people have seen that film, uh, Clockwork Orange. But uh, yeah, very cool. Ken Campbell in Missouri, USA. 
So wow, we've got a couple of great old bikes here. So first up is this 1994 GT Timberline, 95% original as well. Classic bike with that triple triangle, so sought after when they came out. And to be honest, I still think they look really good. Um, there's not much need to have a frame design that, like that really, but that, that was GT, instantly identifiable. There were no imitators, at least none that was worth knowing about. You know, GT had that thing. And then the next bike, this one pleases me even more. So 95 Proflex 755. Again, 95% original. I'll tell you what, Ken, that is, that's a hell of a build on that one. That is great. Really nice to see that. So the Timberline's good with those quadras on the front, but all about that Proflex. Town wall tires, they're so old. You can see all the crisscrossing on the sidewalls where they've been deforming in the corners. It looks like you've got STX brakes on there, perhaps. The brake pads certainly look like that. Uh, Vetter TT saddle, I used to have those. And back in the day when you wore baggy shorts, you used to hook the front of your shorts because that shape on them. Um, so the flight was actually a better one because it had a slight more dome on the front of the saddle. Uh, look at the length of that stem. What's that, 150? Oh, it's got to be 150. Better that thing handle like a barge. <laughs> Brilliant, but uh, so cool to see. And then bar ends if it wasn't long enough already. I tell you what, I love it. I love it. But uh, yeah, super cool for seeing that. Oh, and we're out of rewinds for this week, but I'm gonna throw you just to a little flash here from uh, another shooting the shit with Hans. So um, he's putting all his old retro archive content online, and this is the third installment, looking around his garage, all his cool stuff. If you like retro stuff, you're gonna like it. So check out Hans Ray's video, very cool. All right, now it's time for top mods, and I brought you down to our little lock up here because I want to show you something cool that I've done. A couple of top mods on Chris Smith's personal bike. So, this is his brand new, I don't think he's even ridden this yet, Nuke Proof 275C Mega, obviously. This is the Sam Hill colorway, that blueberry, absolutely amazing looking bike. But let's be clear, Chris ain't going to be doing any enduro stuff on this. He is all about jibbing and jumping and all that stuff. So, we set his bike up so you can do bar spins by routing the front brake cable down through the headset there. And we've also done a bit of a mate do free coaster out back. So he's going to be doing a lot of backwards fakie related tricks. So for up front here, I'm just going to show you how this works. Instead of having the cable running up normally up on the front on the outside, we have it running through the steerage tube of the bike and popping up through a hollow cap here. And what that effectively means is you can sit there and you can run bar spins. So not really my cup of tea, but for Chris, who's a trick ferret, perfect. Cool bit of tech. I think. And then out back here, this can't really fit, well at least you can't currently fit a proper free coaster design to a mountain bike running any sort of transmission on the bike. You might have seen Brett Reader and Brandon Semenuk running free coasters at Crankworks, but they were running a single speed setup out back. So what we've done, we've taken his second and third sprocket off and replaced those with blank spaces. So at the moment, on a normal gear, it pedals backwards. If you go backwards, the cranks go backwards pedal forwards, it goes. But when you shift onto those blank sprockets, if I pedal forwards now, it pedals forwards. If I go backwards, the cranks stay where they are. So it's effectively like having a free coaster. And what that means is Chris is gonna be able to do a whole bunch of really cool tricks using that free coaster. I think that's a pretty cool top mod. What do you guys think? All right, so tech of the week this week has got to be that new rolling update to the Canyon Spectral, which I have right here. So this is Neil's brand new bike. I'm not sure if he's told anyone yet, so uh, well, I'm telling you now. Um, previously, the Spectral had 140 millimeters travel out back and 150 up front. Now it's packing an extra 10 at both ends. So 160 up front, 150 out back. The shock has got slightly longer stroke on it. So it's a five mil more stroke. The bottom bracket heights are very, very slightly different but combined with sag and the size of the bike, it fits in perfectly. Now, one thing to note is the size small still has slightly less travel out back, but the frame design remains the same. It's got all the cool Canyon features on here. Of course, it's a classic four bar out back. It's got a really nice seat mask design with a hidden clamp, like absolutely love that. Kind of reminds me of like racing sailboats, so really nice bit of design. I mean, to be fair, it's pretty nice all round. I've got to say, and I love these sort of clashing colours, this sort of burgundy and red on Neil's one that he's chosen here. And also, another little smart feature that Canyon use on a lot of their bikes for preservation, really. It's these stoppers on the head tube here, so you can't gouge out your top tube. It's got to stop. So, 
really nice idea there as standard. I'm sure you're going to see a lot more of this bike soon. Neil's about to do a riding edit on it, so keep your eyes peeled. Ah, and there we go. So that's the end of another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Hopefully you enjoyed the ride. Uh, don't forget to head over to our shop and snap up some last minute bargains left over from our Black Friday sale. Um, yeah, get involved. And if you want another cool tech video, click down here for five common questions answered. So we did one of these a while back and that's also linked in the video. And it's just answering in a lot of detail, a lot of common questions that you guys often ask. As always, give us a thumbs up if you love GMBN Tech and please don't forget to subscribe.